Now, cybersecurity, obviously, has become more and more in the, in the media, become kind of the important uh, topic that's been addressed more and more. Those of us who follow this are not surprised. Uh, as our societies get more digital, we get also more vulnerable. Uh, that's a very quick way of putting it. Um, we have, of course, for many years, seen, seen, many years since, um, seen cyber espionage operations going on. Um, feel free to sit in the front row, please. You're all welcome. Um, and, and those kind of operations going on for many years. Um, we have also seen more recently, of course, the, the what we saw in the, in the United States, the cyber operations that aim at influence political opinion in the country. Um, and of course, what we are uh, most afraid of, of course, is the cyber operations that will sabotage, destroy something, uh, sabotage a, a, a network, a system, information, or even have physical consequences. Um, and in, in, in dealing with this, of course, we have all these challenges of who does what and who is responsible for what, both, both within the, the, the public sector, I mean, what is military, what is civilian. And of course, to make it even more complicated, since all these networks are owned by the private sector, we have to get them, them on board as well. And that's not only about uh, you know, getting them to talk about it, it's about security clearances and about communications with the private sector, et cetera, et cetera. Very complicated. I just was in Arndal these few days, a uh, couple of days, and, and, and this uh, Norwegian political gathering. It's a, it's a music festival for political nerds. Uh, and and uh, so it was my first time there, but what, what I experienced was that it was like three or four really good panels on cybersecurity. And they were packed as well. So this is, this, is, this is a big issue. It's coming up big time. So again, thank you so much for showing up. Um, and thank you for everybody who watches this live. And you can see it also on YouTube later on. It's a stream. Um, now, we have an excellent talk uh, speaker today. Um, Dr. General. Uh, Efraim Lakhid. We met a couple of years ago in, in Bratislava and we had some very interesting talks about cybersecurity. Uh, Israel is one of the most advanced countries in the world when it comes to cybersecurity, maybe ranking second after the United States and UK, maybe, difficult to measure, but it's considered among experts to be one of the most advanced countries with a long experience in dealing with this kind of threats. Um, you are a retired uh, general. Um, but you also have a PhD uh, in, in, in political science. So you can see it from both angles, the, the practitioner and the, and the analytical, as it were. Um, so you have a, a background from the, from the um, intelligence sector in the, in the IDF, and you also have been a spokesperson for the IDF, um, and a lot of other things that you can read on TV. I will not go into the details, but there's no doubt that we have a person here who really can talk about, about this from an from a, from a, from excellent expert point of view. So we're really looking forward to hearing what you have to share with us. Of course, we're open for Q&A afterwards. Um, and with no more further ado, sir, I think we will leave the uh, podium to you. And you have a few PowerPoints that will get up now. Thank you. to be with you and I'm privileged, especially with the presence of uh, the Israeli ambassador to uh, Norway and his deputy. And uh, for us as Israelis, uh, we are proud to share our experience with others. And since uh, the topic of cyber especially is a buzzword that nowadays uh, uh, there's no uh, form in the world that uh, you can ignore dealing with national security without uh, uh, feeling the importance uh, of uh, cyber. But I think that especially today and especially uh, in, in a form that uh, see these uh, aspects from wider uh, angles, I think that uh, we have uh, also to uh, refer to the last days in Europe uh, dealing with terror. It's not uh, directly cyber, but it is in the framework that uh, I wanted also to uh, put the cyber in the method uh, of intelligence. And uh, what happened uh, in Barcelona is a, a case by chance, and uh, tragically we have uh, uh, to speak about it uh, today, but uh, uh, it is important uh, to understand that uh, coping with terrorism nowadays 
it's not a uh, unique mission of a country, it's not a unique mission of a nation, it's an international effort. I'm sure that uh, 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 saying that uh, coping with terror is an international duty uh, is, is, not, uh, is not new. But we see uh, once in uh, very few uh, weeks, uh, again and again, uh, the meaning that uh, maybe that uh, the uh, importance is not translated to deeds. And uh, what I can say only as a uh, statement uh, which sh should be detailed in uh, many other forms, that uh, uh, international uh, terrorism has to be also uh, managed by uh, uh, international cooperation between countries, between intelligence services, between uh, police services and uh, actions. Intelligence is not the target. Intelligence is all, only the means, but the, the target is uh, uh, to uh, fight and uh, to uh, uh, deter the terrorists from uh, uh, such actions. Uh, if you uh, bear in mind that terrorism and democracy are two uh, contradictory uh, tendencies, and sometimes uh, countries uh, don't take the uh, proper measures because it can hit some uh, uh, human rights. But you see that uh, uh, it also in the history of, uh, of Europe uh, itself, if you saw uh, the Irish terror, if you saw uh, Bader Meinhof uh, in, in Germany in the past, countries that uh, knew that they have uh, to fight against, they uh, found also the uh, measures. That's uh, uh, what will be maybe hinted uh, uh, afterwards uh, when I uh, will uh, relate to some specific aspects of uh, cyber. I wanted to start with uh, the framework of uh, intelligence in order uh, to show you at least the framework in Israel. The benefit of having me here in this forum is to bring here the Israeli experience and uh, to maybe to raise some uh, highlights or to raise some ideas, what is relevant to you, what is not relevant to you. Uh, the big, big difference, of course, is that uh, Israel is 24-7 uh, in a permanent uh, conflict uh, with others. I don't have to mention the others. I, I, I show only the, uh, the main. Uh, and uh, being in such a, a, a permanent campaign, of course, uh, our challenge is uh, maybe different uh, from uh, others. Uh, when I say uh, the Israeli intelligence, the uh, major three organizations of the Israeli intelligence are the military intelligence, the Mossad, which is known as the external uh, intelligence, and the internal intelligence, uh, what we call Shabak in Hebrew, the Israeli Security Agency. It is relevant because when we deal afterwards with cyber, you will see that every one of these uh, uh, components has a certain uh, mission in the wide responsibility of uh, cyber. Uh, these are the highlights of the Israeli intelligence today. I uh, mention it because we will see where cyber is in uh, these uh, highlights. All, uh, the main targets, uh, these are uh, targets that uh, I, I didn't uh, put yesterday. Terror is in our highest priority and uh, terror for us is also uh, some, some circles starting with the borders also uh, with uh, what we, we are under a threat different from any other country in the world today of rockets and missiles. You cannot imagine uh, when I come to, to other countries, it's, it's uh, sometimes an absurd to think that 
a country can be uh, under a threat from uh, another border by missiles and rockets, which means that the enemy has not to penetrate physically, but he fires uh, rockets and missiles, and this is a different dimension. And in uh, this type of threat, we have to cut the ability, not uh, in the few seconds before they fire, we have to cut the ability when we see that the, uh, uh, the missiles are uh, imported, sometimes from uh, Syria to Lebanon, sometimes from Iran to, to Gaza. So you understand that even saying that we speak about a threat like missiles and, and, and rockets, it doesn't mean that we have to uh, uh, find it in the seconds of the fire, but much, much before. And it is also relevant to cyber, because in order to know, uh, you understand that if Iran uh, wants to uh, assist, and it wants to assist uh, the uh, countries uh, or the organizations uh, around us uh, with uh, uh, these uh, measures, uh, they don't say it publicly. We are now sending 400 missiles or 4,000 rockets. And to uh, identify the system of uh, supply, uh, these uh, uh, threats, uh, cyber is one of the major uh, uh, products uh, that we use. Uh, Iran, as I mentioned before, related with uh, terror. Iran, for us, is in two dimensions. If we met two years ago, I am sure that Iran was equivalent only to nuclear, uh, military nuclear capability. Nowadays, we speak about Iran, first of all, as a factor of terror, or a factor of terror that is not only relevant to Israel. I think that the whole world, including you, including the EU, have to bear in mind that uh, Iran is not the ancient, so-called the ancient uh, threat of uh, uh, nuclear. Iran is relevant today as a factor that assists terrorist uh, organization. Uh, I, I'm sure that you know uh, uh, easily to identify the difference between the uh, conservative threat of uh, uh, countries. In the past, we spoke about the Syrian army, about the Egyptian army, and about the Jordanian army. Nowadays, we don't speak about army. We speak about non-state threat and non-state organizations like Hezbollah, like Hamas, like ISIS, and uh, to uh, cope with organizations is totally different. This is not only an Israeli statement. It is relevant also to you. I'm sure that your uh, uh, intelligence services uh, know easily how difficult it is to deal with organization uh, in comparison to, uh, to deal with uh, um, states. Uh, and the last uh, in, in these highest priorities is Syria. Syria, which is not a country, which is not a state. Syria nowadays is a set of organizations, a set of enclaves, a set of, uh, if you want, uh, communities that uh, uh, have, if you want, an internal uh, conflict. But this internal conflict has implication not only on uh, the territory of Syria. You saw the thousands of refugees that were exported to uh, Europe. You saw thousands of, uh, uh, um, of uh, others that uh, went to Jordan. A country like Jordan, which, if you want, doesn't have nothing to do with the internal conflict of Syria, but they suffer from uh, the refugees that uh, are now uh, some uh, millions that the country has to, uh, to deal with in a certain, very, very certain limited assistance of the world. 
but a, a country that uh, have to absorb uh, refugees, maybe you are lucky not uh, to have it, but you know what is uh, in, in Europe with refugees and imagine that uh, these refugees uh, are also in, in Arab countries and that's a, a, a big, big challenge. Um, about Jordan and Egypt, we deal with the stability of the regimes. These are the two countries uh, in, in the border with Israel that are in a formal status of uh, peace, which is important because I, I speak about uh, threat, 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 but we are lucky also to have at least uh, two countries, uh, two neighbor countries, Jordan and uh, Egypt, that uh, are with peace treaty. Sometimes it's a, a certain cold peace, but still peace is better than hostility. Uh, the Palestinian Authority is uh, not only an, inter an, an Israeli case, it's an international uh, uh, topic. Uh, we, uh, I'm sure, uh, are exposed to the, to the different uh, uh, measures that the Palestinians uh, take in, in the political level, in the uh, military terrorist uh, level. And uh, uh, this is a, a big uh, target for us. Uh, we also deal with the regional uh, initiatives uh, of peace that is known as the Saudi, Saudi initiative. And also uh, Russia, USA, and uh, China are partners that uh, 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 play an important role in the Middle East, and uh, we have uh, uh, to take them also uh, in consideration. I, I gave uh, telegraphically these highlights before we go to, to cyber, because you have to uh, remember, if you want to see uh, how Israel deals with cyber, that it's not only a technical method, it's not only a technical system that we have to, uh, uh, to put some thousands, and we put some thousands of people that deal with the technical aspects of cyber. But we have to see what is the background of, uh, uh, of uh, cyber in the context uh, of uh, the Israeli national security missions. So uh, early warning is a term that every country knows. For every country, the meaning of early warning is different. Uh, if we were uh, Spanish uh, 24 hours ago, for them, early warning means that we have to be aware to the option that in this season of tourism, maybe that terrorists will come. This is a statement that cannot stand alone. This is a statement that has to be implemented in intelligence, in actions, sometimes in legal uh, measures. Uh, for us, when we speak about early warning, it's with the diversity, what we call, from knife to nuclear. Imagine, on one hand, we have to be aware to a person 15, 16 years old that uh, uh, come seven in the morning, take from the kitchen a, a knife, and they uh, go to be a suicide bomber. No one knows about him. Maybe sometimes that even the family is not uh, aware that he is going to be a terrorist. And this is not a, something that I uh, frame now as an option. This is a certain threat. I don't, I'm not acquainted with any other country that has such a threat that you, you understand that when I say that a person with a knife is a threat, it means that the whole system, the military, the uh, ISA, the internal security, and sometimes, not every time, the, also the Mossad, we have to see from eyes that we were not used in the past. If we met uh, years ago, 
that was not uh, even a, 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 a tiny uh, threat. So we start with, with the knife uh, and we come up to the, uh, what I say, the, the nuclear, the uh, Iranian agreement, the Iranian agreement, we, 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 we want to see also and to control how this agreement is implemented. So I give you the diversity from knife to, uh, to nuclear to see that uh, it means that we have to give a set and a lot of answers to threats that maybe other countries don't deal with. Uh, and uh, the term real time, we know real time and we speak about real time in, in many aspects, mostly in also in civil aspects. You want a, a, a real time response of the telephone company. You want a real time response of computers and so on and so on. We speak about real time, which means that we have to collect the information to analyze it, to understand what does it mean, and to give the orders uh, in order to prevent the case. I don't have to give examples because uh, I see here people who are very experienced, but I give you the meaning of what does it mean real time in Israeli uh, eyes. Uh, the changes uh, in the area, as uh, I uh, mentioned before, this is a very, very big change, a very big change. In the past, tiny Israel, because you have to remember, Israel now is uh, uh, already uh, double uh, the population of, uh, of your country. But uh, we are 8 million vis-a-vis -vis, uh, uh, half a million of Muslims uh, in uh, two, three circles that are potential, potential uh, threat. Uh, I, I don't relate to everyone uh, as a threat, but it means that we are in a vicinity that uh, uh, the difference between countries and uh, uh, terrorist organizations is a big difference. And uh, as, as you obviously know, the terrorist has no border. We speak about ISIS. The whole world speak about ISIS. ISIS is without identity. In the past, when you had a conflict, you had someone, even with our, let's say, traditional conflict with the Palestinians, there is a Palestinian authority. They have a chair. They have a government. We have an address to negotiate. Nowadays, we speak about uh, uh, targets about terrorist organization, I repeat and repeat uh, ISIS because this is an international case to, to understand and, uh, and to study the lessons. Even if you want to, to uh, bridge the uh, gaps, like we had conflicts in the past, you negotiated. Sometimes you succeed, some, sometimes uh, you fail here, you don't have a, an identity. You don't have anyone to speak with, which makes the, the whole case uh, very, very complicated. And uh, something which is also relevant to Israel more than to other countries is the fact that our intelligence has to give answers of both. On the one hand, the tactic, the tactic which means we know that there is a person that wants to launch now a rocket from a, a neighborhood in Gaza toward Sderot, an Israeli uh, city in the south. The meaning of uh, this location is to give in uh, 12 digits the uh, location to a helicopter will, which will prevent the fire. This is a tactic answer. Sometimes it's a helicopter, sometimes it's an unmanned uh, vehicle, sometimes it, uh, it can be a tank. So the intelligence uh, should be so precise that it will be relevant to the different dimensions of uh, a military answer. 
on the other side, we have to deal also with the strategy. We have to deal with the Middle East as, as a whole, with the Arab League, with the EU, with the uh, UN, uh, with UNIFIL as an international uh, force uh, that deploy in South Lebanon, and so on and so on. So I, I give you the variety only as highlights to understand when we will deal with cyber that it is relevant to all what I uh, spoke here. Uh, uh, the, <coughs> the last uh, frame show uh, the, if you want, the picture of uh, what uh, is in one of the highest priorities nowadays, what we call information warfare. And cyber is one of the factors of information warfare. Nowadays, we know that uh, in order to hit, it doesn't mean only to fire. You can hit effectively with uh, BDS, with boycott, with uh, uh, no, uh, uh, divestment and sanctions. And uh, sometimes uh, these measures are very effective. They are not, they don't uh, kill people, but they hit the prestige and the reputation of a country. They hit the uh, role of a country in international uh, uh, forums. Uh, UNESCO, which was, which is, an international uh, organization, what can be more than science and uh, education and culture, th some uh, uh, values uh, which are so uh, important to everyone, to every nation. Uh, we know that by information warfare, you can take also such an organization and to bring it to uh, directions that are against the interest of human right, against the interest of humankind, against the interest of human values. And this is, uh, this is done by, uh, if you want, by terror uh, measures. I uh, show you here, this is a cartoon. It's a, a um, authentic cartoon of what does it mean uh, information warfare uh, from the uh, point of view of the terrorist organization, from the point of view of uh, Arab countries. Here I gave you only a, a certain sketch of the uh, big, big, uh, a big meaning of what does it mean today uh, big data, uh, and we go now uh, to uh, deal with cyber. You see here, in one minute, one minute in, in uh, life, you see how many millions in one minute are in WhatsApp, in Facebook, in YouTube, in, in Tinder, whatever. I'm sure that you know this, uh, you, you know this uh, challenge. Here is a, um, a certain way uh, to frame it in, in terms of data. Of course, no one, uh, no one can deal with all this data. And the big challenge of big data is to select. And I give you the number that uh, will end this uh, aspect before we go to uh, uh, cyber, uh, the number of the Israeli uh, intelligence that has to deal with uh, uh, big data, we collect every day 80 million pieces, 80 million pieces of information. When I say we collect in the different dimensions of uh, 
SIGINT, of signal intelligence, of human intelligence, of visual intelligence, of uh, what we call OSINT, the open source of intelligence. From all these dimensions, we collect 80 million pieces of information. And we uh, make a process of different processes, but let's say a process of selection to take from this 80 million those who are relevant, what we call the red uh, information. And the number is 80, 80. So vis-a-vis -vis 80 million, we have to come to the 80. You understand it is not a mathematical uh, process. It is a process that uh, includes a lot of uh, lessons, a lot of uh, um, um, code, code words, a lot of uh, segments, a lot of criteria that we improve from day to day, from day to day. The number of telephone of someone, the uh, email of someone, the uh, YouTube of someone, and when I say someone, you understand that the terrorist or another uh, enemy uh, is not willing to say, I am uh, a Muhammad uh, uh, Fulan Fulan, uh, who is now engaged with a ship that is going to bring missiles to Gaza. But in order to give the answer with this uh, definition, we have, of course, to gather a lot of information to analyze it, to be experienced. And what we have in Israel, different from other countries, we have on one hand professionals who uh, serve uh, many years in the service. The ser when I say service, it can be the military service, the intelligence, and others. And on the other hand, we are lucky and also we are limited with a uh, set of some thousands, some thousands of uh, uh, young people in compulsory service. In Israel, we have a duty uh, of uh, serving two years for a female and uh, three years for male. Uh, in the different uh, uh, services of the military. And uh, imagine that uh, every year we have to change a third of our people, of our professional staff. Uh, as I said, on one hand, they are brilliant. They are, uh, of course, very, very high motivated. On the other hand, the, the meaning of circulation, the meaning that you have to... Uh, to train every year so many people and sometimes to start uh, and, and to, uh, 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 to make uh, certain uh, uh, faults that uh, uh, were in the past because uh, people uh, sometimes are not experienced. But after all, I think that uh, the benefit of Israel having uh, the young generation, which is uh, uh, who are people very, very, as I say, high motivated and very professional. This is a benefit that uh, we are lucky to have. Can we uh, go to the other PowerPoint? After I told you uh, the role of intelligence and uh, uh, some highlights of the Israeli intelligence, now let's see how is the cyber in this uh, uh, framework? First of all, uh, when we speak about cyber, uh, cyber is not only in, in the hands of intelligence. Uh, we started <coughs> as a nation, as a government, we started in 2011, only six years ago, to build a national cyber staff subordinated directly to the prime minister. And when I say subordinate, subordinately uh, directly to the prime minister, prime minister, it means that really the prime minister gives his personal priority. And we, in this framework, 
we uh, put one of our cities, Beersheba, which is uh, what we call the capital of the Negev. If you know the uh, geography of Israel, Negev is the southern part of Israel. <coughs> Remember that Israel is only 20,000 square kilometers. It's the, only, uh, the whole Israel and uh, 600 kilometers from north to uh, south. So in this 600 uh, kilometers, we have to put all the infrastructure, all the culture, all the people, and so on, and so on, and so on. And uh, one of the biggest uh, 10 cities of Israel, Beersheba, which is, as I said, the capital of the south, is now the capital of the Israeli cyber. Even saying that, it meant and it means that we give priority in infrastructure, in education. The University of Ben Gurion University in Beersheba is now one of the best, uh, not only in scale of Israel, but also internationally as a, uh, a academic uh, uh, institute of uh, cyber. The cyber units of uh, the military are now redeployed to the south near Beersheba. So I give you a uh, national decision of a country saying that cyber is uh, in one of the highest priority of the uh, government. It is under the prime minister, uh, directly under the prime minister ministry. It has a spatial uh, city. It has a spatial academic uh, infrastructure. It has the uh, uh, transfer of units, military and other units from the center to uh, this area. And uh, to coordinate all these uh, efforts, we have a national staff of cyber that, as I said, was established in 2011. 2015, two years ago, only two years ago, we started a legal process of uh, framing the legal aspects of cyber. I don't know if there are many countries that have a spe specific law of cyber. The meaning is not only from legal point of view, the meaning is giving responsibility. And when I say cyber, it starts from the uh, division between the civil side and the defense side. I start from the civil side because the civil side is much more dangerous because the civil side means that on one hand you have the electricity company which is very, very minded to the threat of cyber because they are hit every day with thousands of thousands of hits. That's one. On the other hand, there are some hundreds of water companies, water companies that are a, 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 a part of the municipalities. And uh, you can be hit in, uh, a, uh, in Nazareth, which is a, a city in the, in the north, that uh, a cyber attack to uh, the system of water in Nazareth can hit uh, thousands of people. And uh, on one hand, I told you the uh, electricity company, which is a big company with high priority of uh, cyber security. And on the other hand, we, we don't have all the facilities to defend the uh, uh, I, I relate uh, one in the first priority, I relate to what we call the basic, basic infrastructure, which is electricity, water, communication, gas, and, and energy. So when I say civil uh, market, the civil sector, uh, the, the law that are now uh, under uh, the process has to uh, write and uh, to assure the responsibility, the responsibility of the municipality of a certain city 
to defend its systems, to, uh, 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 to be sure that the banks, the banks which, which deal with the, the uh, basic uh, economy of a country, to uh, uh, make them uh, responsible to secure their facilities. As a, another bank, we have, like every country, we have the bank of blood. We are afraid, and it is, uh, I, I will relate to a, ex a national exercise that we have every year. We are afraid of uh, hitting the bank of blood. You can imagine what does it mean that thousands of people get a blood B uh, instead of A or vice versa. So the bank of blood has to be uh, secured from cyber security point of view. Someone has to, uh, to put the responsibility. So I gave you uh, uh, some uh, examples. First of all, to show that uh, even when we speak cyber, 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 First of all, it's not only military and it's not only defense. It is relevant to every sector and the government, if you want, the nation has to put the responsibilities, who is responsible for what, and of course to give them also the measures. It's, it, it, it is not enough to say you are responsible if you don't uh, give the measures. And when I say measures, it's not only money. Measures means also a, a, a performance, a, a professional a, a abilities, and, and so on. Uh, April 2016, a year ago, we, uh, uh, we built a new forum, a new organization, which is very, very important. It is uh, what we call the National Authority of Cyber Defense. When I told you before about the national cyber staff, it deals with all. It deals with the academy, it deals with the civil sector, it deals with the municipalities, it deals with Beersheba, all what I said. But we saw that in order to implement the policy of the country, we have to uh, uh, frame a certain organization, and it, this organization is led by a person who was a colonel in uh, Unit 8200. Uh, I'm sure that this is a number well known in the world. And this person leads a uh, uh, authority which will implement all the uh, procedures and to control what is done by the different uh, organizations, only in the civil sector, what is done in order to defend the uh, uh, important uh, systems. This is a, a relatively new function. I give you the history of the last decade First of all, to show you, when, when, when I speak about the Israeli experience and I want to share with you the Israeli experience, it's not only highlights of uh, uh, phrases. It is important, uh, it's need to be done, and, and so on. It is from phase to phase, as you saw, from 2011 until 2016, you see from year to year, we study lessons, we see the experience, and we see, and uh, I, 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 uh, maybe I describe it uh, very idea, ideal, ideal, but you understand that there are a lot of frictions, uh, there are a lot of interest, also money is engaged, but let's start with the, uh, uh, the principles, and of course, afterwards, the. Uh, the ways how, how it's implemented is different from country to country. On the uh, defense side, on the, let's say, the military aspect, I, I told you that uh, all the authorities uh, that I mentioned deal 
especially with the civil sector. In the military uh, aspect, we have uh, also a, a very important uh, short history, but important also to share with you. A decade ago, or more than a decade ago, in the first years of the of 2000, you remember the international uh, um, international uh, operation of Bug 2000. You remember when we we moved from 1999 to year 2000, the whole world was very worried how how uh, the uh, computers will behave, and Fortunately, they behaved well. We treated them well, so they behaved well. But bug 2000, which started as a buzzword, was also a certain uh, uh, degradation of the uh, consciousness of nations, including Israel, of course, uh, to, to the factor that computer is not only a, a computer of uh, games and toys, that computer is, is a certain measure that we have to, to deal with. So uh, we uh, started at, uh, at that time to uh, strengthen the abilities in the military that started many years before. In Israel, when I, I served, I started to serve in the 70s, and even in the 70s, we, we had a certain start. We didn't call it at that time cyber, but uh, we, we, uh, we made a certain uh, set of operations in Israel and, and abroad, uh, which is now very modest in comparison to what we have uh, today. And uh, uh, in year 2000, uh, we uh, put the responsibility of military cyber in two uh, functions. The offensive function of cyber, which means that Israel has an offensive ability of cyber, something that we say we have, we don't speak about the abilities, obviously, like uh, many other countries don't speak, you see from time to time some rumors about the uh, involvement of Russia in the elections in USA, the involvement of Russia in uh, Georgia, uh, the involvement uh, in, uh, of other countries in, in, uh, of uh, uh, North Korea, in uh, uh, Sony, in, in uh, uh, United States uh, uh, films, and from time to time, we hear about uh, uh, attacks, uh, the different, different, totally different aspect of cyber in comparison to other attacks that uh, you don't have a uh, finger, uh, fingerprint of, uh, of the operator. When we had uh, last night in Barcelona what we had, even if we don't know who is the person yet, maybe it will uh, last a uh, few, few weeks or few months and we will find him. Such attacks has some fingerprints. Cyber is a dimension without borders, a dimension without actors. When I say without, it means that you have to put a lot of, uh, to invest a lot in order to identify the, uh, who is behind the attack. And who is behind the attack is not only a, a, a question of uh, uh, a theoretical question. You have to, uh, uh, to defend and to improve your uh, security uh, to uh, uh, prevent such uh, attacks in the future. So the offensive part of cyber is in the hands of uh, the uh, military intelligence. And in the military intelligence, uh, it is in the unit uh, 8200. And uh, 
few years ago, a decade ago, there was a um, vision that Israel, like some other countries, has to build a fifth service. We have the ground forces, we have the navy, we have the air force, we have the space with satellites, and we thought that we should frame also the cyber as the fifth service. Nowadays, when I say nowadays, I must say that the chief of staff, our highest uh, person of uh, defense, uh, changed his, de changed his uh, uh, opinion. He changed his opinion. He made a decision two years ago to, f to build a, a new uh, service. But after uh, different negotiations and after we analyzed what does it mean, he says, he says and it means that the, 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 the government uh, 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 gave the, uh, the okay that we will not have a certain service of service and it will remain in two corps of the military. One corp is the intelligence for offense, and uh, another corp is uh, the communication, the corp of communication, which will deal with the defensive aspect of cyber. So this is the system of Israel uh, in the military aspect of uh, cyber. And the ISA, Shabak, the Internal Security Agency is responsible for uh, what we call uh, um, preventing cyber attacks uh, in the uh, civil uh, sector. So here you see uh, that there are a lot of partners, a lot of players, and uh, it is important, of course, to uh, find uh, cooperation and, uh, uh, between them. Now I want to uh, uh, give you a, uh, so uh, that conflicts without borders, the enemy is terrorist and not army, the front is civil population. This is a, uh, a statement that uh, even, when I say even, I mean every nation has to see the difference. In the past, when we spoke about war, the war, the war was in battlefield. Tanks vis-a-vis -vis tanks, artillery, engineering corps, uh, submarines, uh, whatever. Uh, and uh, the conflict uh, and the confrontation uh, was uh, between soldiers, different soldiers. Now, imagine what does it mean? When I say that civil population, it is a, a totally different method. To defend millions of people is different from handling uh, some thousands of uh, uh, soldiers in the battlefield. In Israel, because we see this priority of defending the civil population, we have an annual exercise something that I recommend very much. In every forum that, uh, that I come, I recommend. It's not enough, it's not enough to rely on the professional uh, uh, circles that deal with uh, uh, cyber or even other threats because they have their uh, internal uh, exercises, they have their internal training, they have the, the system of uh, studying lessons and so on and so on. But when we speak about uh, these type of threats, it deals with everyone. Uh, and, and terror, not only cyber, but cyber is one, is something that is relevant uh, to everyone in his computer, uh, to every bank, to every city, to every municipality. And we have in Israel a week of emergency every year. We are so uh, experienced 
that we are ready to invite every year, we invite also a professional staff from other countries, if they want, of course. And uh, from year to year, we have more and more uh, people from other countries that want to see how we deal with uh, different uh, aspects of uh, uh, emergency, including cyber. And uh, this, uh, as I see with uh, my relations with many, many countries, we are the only country that we make this week of emergency in order to uh, update the uh, awareness of uh, people from kindergarten to the prime minister. And such a week, it doesn't mean that 24 seven in this week we, uh, we exercise. Every day is devoted to another aspect, but I give you a, a certain example how a country prepare itself to emergency. Um, I wanted uh, not only to speak about uh, um, theory and about the organizational aspect that uh, I mentioned, I wanted to, to take one of the aspects of information warfare. I told, I, I mentioned uh, before, the information warfare is one of the uh, highest uh, priority uh, of uh, cyber, uh, especially in this aspect that we can speak about. And uh, what uh, is known as informational warfare was known in the past as psychological warfare, the PW uh, psychological warfare. Uh, and uh, let's see uh, something that we exposed uh, now we don't speak about it, but a few years ago we spoke about. So I, uh, I'm ready to, to share with you a, a certain aspect how we use cyber in a certain way of uh, its offensive, what we call soft offensive. Uh, in uh, a, December uh, uh, 28, 2008, uh, uh, we had an operation in Gaza. And when I say operation, you understand that operation is, uh, is air force, is tanks, is uh, uh, infantry and intelligence. But we included also another aspect that is not relevant to many other countries, but I want to, sh to share with you the uh, way of thinking of information warfare. We wanted to limit the people that are hit in such an operation. We wanted to prevent to hit people that are not terrorists, that are not involved in terrorism. How to do it? You, you don't have a definition of a person, he is a terrorist and the, uh, uh, the, the kid uh, uh, of uh, six years old that is uh, considered as a uh, cyber. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay, what, what we did, at that uh, operation, and we did it also in, in a few others, uh, we called the people in Gaza. We called them something that uh, is contradictory to the way of thinking of soldiers, because soldiers want to attack. Soldiers want to hit. Soldier, soldiers don't deal with he is not involved, so we will not uh, attack him. And we wanted to be sure that we hit only the terrorists. And you see what we did. It started from leaflets, which is traditional, and if you want, a very, very old fashion of psychological warfare. But still, there are people that don't have in Gaza, they don't have the 
uh, computers, they don't have telephone, and for them to get the leaflet, the written printed leaflet uh, on behalf of the IDF was the only way. So we put it in uh, 300,000 in Gaza Street, in Rafah, in Khan uh, uh, in, in others. Afterwards, simultaneously, we had be collected the phone numbers of those that we knew. It's not a, a total uh, system. It's a system based on a certain collection effort of uh, collecting the numbers of those and by a uh, voice, <coughs> voice machine, something that you know from, from every commercial uh, that you, you have in every country, we put the commercial system to a military mission and we uh, uh, made a certain phone call few minutes before the attack. Something, once again, so strange, so strange from every, from every uh, uh, military thinking. We, we uh, gave us the limitation that we will uh, inform the people that we are going to hit in order not to attack people who are not involved. I don't say that after all, we succeeded, but I, I give you a, a, a certain a way of thinking how to use cyber for this meaning. This is the text. The text, of course, was in Arabic. The, IV, the IDF is operating against organizations and individuals that uh, participate in terrorist activities and, and so on and so on. Uh, I don't give you here the whole text, but you, you can see it afterwards. But I, I show you a, a way how to use cyber for information uh, warfare in a scenario which is very relevant to Israel. Maybe it's not relevant to every other country. When, when I share with you the Israeli experience, it doesn't mean that every aspect is relevant to you. But I share with you also the, the way uh, of the on one hand, the ideology and how uh, this ideology is translated. Uh, okay, so uh, w we we deal uh, with the social the social network, something that uh, we did not deal in the past. In the past, when we spoke about uh, open sources intelligence, we. Uh, we uh, monitored the, uh, the TV, we monitored the radio, we monitored, of course, the printed uh, press. Afterwards, we monitored uh, the websites. Nowadays, we monitor social network. We monitor social web, uh, network. When I say we, it includes uh, the military and also the IFA in order to see the person that I mentioned before, the person with the knife, the person with the knife may be, and it occurs, that he, uh, he writes uh, in his uh, uh, Facebook that uh, he is, go uh, he is uh, upset with what's going on in, uh, in Jerusalem and he wants to do something. We don't say, I'm going now to do uh, the specific uh, uh, case because sometimes he doesn't know what he will do but even to identify some uh, hints of people that uh, are potential uh, terrorists this uh, media the social media is uh, is is a wonderful way this is also in brackets it's also a, a way how to identify what's going on in Syria the different uh, fractions in, in Syria uh, don't have the regular network of uh, military. They have the uh, social media and, and that was for them uh, something that uh, I want uh, to uh, 
to conclude, uh, in order to give you uh, space to refer or to ask, what we do with the information and uh, how we prepare ourselves to uh, to deal with these threats, not only military. So first of all, we uh, have to build deterrence. To build deterrence uh, means that uh, we have to find the, the very typical and very um, relevant example can be now Hezbollah in Lebanon. A decade ago, in the summer 2006, we had a big war, what we is known as the Second Lebanon War, and the uh, uh, result of that war was also strengthening uh, UNIFIL as an international force. At that time, France uh, was the, the major uh, player uh, instead of USA in the past. And uh, since then, Hezbollah, which was updated permanently, its uh, military capabilities, is still a threat. And uh, in order to, uh, to make Hezbollah, starting with the leader of Hezbollah, to make him to think permanently what will be the price if he initiates a, a missile or rockets uh, toward Israel. This is the deterrence in the practical meaning of the deterrence, not only a vision. I don't, I don't have and no one has a very formal uh, definition how we build the deterrence. But if you see a perspective of a decade from 2006 up to now, and you see that Hezbollah is refraining from uh, firing missiles to Israel, that, that is the translation of the deterrence. So this is one of the most important targets of our country toward emergency. Uh, the last, uh, I don't uh, want to, to relate to everything. The last is, is the role of international organization, which is something uh, relevant when, when I come to uh, foreign countries. Israel, like many others, uh, like many other countries, uh, don't stand alone. And uh, we feel that we have to involve uh, in uh, our preparations, in all the aspects uh, of uh, preparations, we have to involve uh, other countries. First, to involve them in the cooperation of intelligence. We have the Israeli intelligence led by the Mossad, have uh, uh, some uh, dozens of more than 100, more, more than 100 uh, intelligence services in the world that we are in a permanent uh, cooperation, which means that it is win-win cooperation. We supply, they supply, we an analyze, they analyze, uh, sometimes we do uh, 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 joint uh, operations, sometimes we only exchange uh, views, sometimes we exchange information. Uh, you uh, understand that nowadays a terrorist that start in, uh, uh, in Mecca and land in uh, Athens and fly from that to uh, uh, Madrid, uh, you, you cannot uh, control him uh, alone. You have immediately to, uh, to update uh, uh, suspected uh, people, suspected organizations and so on. So that's one, uh, one uh, channel of uh, involvement. The second uh, channel, which is also a daily uh, function of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, 
is uh, to deal with other countries about what we call the, the information warfare, about the BDS, about the different sanctions, uh, how, how to deal with UNESCO and how to deal with the EU and how to deal with UN and so on and so on. So the uh, uh, international arena is a very important factor uh, in uh, the preparation of Israel uh, to emergency. And uh, of course, when I say uh, emergency, for us, emergency is a daily uh, challenge. Uh, I don't wish you to have such a challenge, but I wish you to learn the lessons uh, from others, not only from Israel, and uh, to wish to have a silent and calm uh, country like you have. Thank you. Salmao, yes, okay. Uh, thank you, General, uh, for such a comprehensive and, and excellent overview um, <coughs> of what you've been doing and what your challenges are. I'll try now to start off before I open up with, with kind of coming from a peaceful country, we don't have a daily crisis. It's the challenge is kind of opposite, right? To kind of wake us up from the, from the, from the peaceful side and actually be imagining that actually something serious can happen. And, and, and uh, as any democracy, uh, and I'm sure you have the same, uh, uh, the we have the the, the sector principle, right? So everything is dealt with within the each sector. Uh, so it's up to the responsibility of, for instance, a single company or a single agency uh, to deal with the cyber threats on a daily basis. And the problem is, of course, when this becomes bigger and it's such a it's such a challenge that it's it's more than your little company or more than your sector, and it becomes a national issue. And then the question is, you know, who 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 takes the responsibility then? Uh, because obviously you need support and maybe there's a question of command and control and that becomes difficult when you have a, a such a uh, severe system. So my question is, what can we learn? How can we, <laughs> how can we be better prepare uh, to get, make sure we have such a command and control in the moment we have a major cyber attack in a peaceful, otherwise peaceful society? I, I think that I started with the organizations in Israel especially in order to share with you, it doesn't mean that you, you need the exactly same organizations, but it starts, as, as I showed you, only five, six years ago. The national staff of cyber for you is not late because you are not in, the, in, in, in this uh, um, rapid uh, attack like, like we are. But if you start with a staff of coordination, they have to, first of all, to learn what are the different uh, aspects that are relevant to Norway. Norway has its, uh, and you, you are also with Scandinavia, so maybe you have, you, uh, it's better for you not to have only a national, but multinational of Scandinavia. Uh, you have a very, very uh, good neighbor, Estonia, one of the best in the world, one of the best in the world, and you know that the center of the EU of cyber is in Estonia. So you have neighbors. So you don't start from zero. I mean, uh, even if you don't have all the facilities that I mentioned, uh, you have a lot of uh, organizations to learn from. Another challenge related to this, yeah. um, is the private sector and the trust and communication between private sector and, and public sector. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's classified, you know, so difficult to share, and there might be maybe may also be a lack of trust between the private sector that might not want to share with the public sector. Is that is that a, has that been a challenge for you to to, uh, to incorporate the, the the private sector? Of course. Uh, if I, uh, I I mentioned the banks. The banks are, in Israel, one of the weakest, uh, weakest organizations that are subject potentially to attack. And they are attacked from time to time. They are attacked. And uh, they want also uh, a financial assistance from uh, the government 
because the measures that they have to take are very expensive measures. So the government also uh, assists, first of all professionally and also financially, assists the uh, business sector and private sector because afterwards it is the uh, defense degree of the country. It's not that we hit a certain bank and uh, uh, the victim is the bank. A, a, um, a tech on a bank or a tech or a, of a water facility is a, 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 national, a national case. So we have to, to see on one hand, it is totally their responsibility. It is important to say that formally it's their responsibility. We have to assist, but formally it's their responsibility by law. Okay, let's uh, let's open up for for the Q and A. Thank you, people. Lots of hands. I think you're first. Uh, so, uh, Abdul Al Sanya. Thank you. 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 Uh, we have a cybersecurity center. Um, one of the areas I go to many conferences, and I really like your last point about international cooperation, because I really appreciate the information you have been sharing with, with us now. But one of the things I've been crying for and sort of crying in the wilderness for is that I think we need an international court of cyber attribution. As a technician, whatever everybody says, can you tell me where this came from? And I'm going, oh, uh, yeah. And I see how, in terms of intelligence and escalation, how this is being used and misused. Would you support that we have an international court of attribution in The Hague? Because I remember everybody saying that this cyber attacks and some are not. Do we need this in terms of the international level? To say frankly, um, I'm not, I'm not uh, sure that uh, international cooperation can be with full exposure. We have to remember, even in my presentation, you understand obviously that I shared with you what we allow and what, what we afford to share. This is not a professional forum of cooperation. It's only, a, if you want, a uh, public, public uh, forum. And let's say that in a professional forum, there is a better degree. But it, even saying that it is a better degree, it is still, still limited. The highlights or the, the very, very intimate professional facilities and per professional performance is something that countries don't share. If you see uh, Russia and the USA uh, with a very, very, let's say, open, so-called open relations, but after all, uh, they don't share uh, uh, ev uh, every organization in USA or every organization in, in Russia what they can do and what they did. So I don't want to, uh, to be naive and uh, want, don't want to, to, sh to frame a certain uh, idea, uh, ideal, ide ideal uh, um, picture of uh, cooperation. It should be, but remember that after all, it is limited and only bilateral, not multilateral. In, in some bilateral uh, uh, cases, you can you can gain more, but the the international level level will be generally uh, in in a lower uh, uh, mode of uh, assistance. I must say that uh, I I admire what the EU uh, does, as as I mentioned Estonia. Because this this is an international, if you want, in international. It's only EU, but it's an international cooperation, and uh, you can see that countries that send 
uh, people to, uh, to be trained or to different conferences and forums, uh, this is cooperation, but it doesn't mean that they share all what they know and all what uh, they uh, are ready to, uh, to share. Thank you. I, time is running fast. I have two people, so I think I will um, finish the first set and then uh, proceed if you have time. Uh, sorry. Hi there. I'm uh, Peter Otis. I am from the Telenor Group, so working on cybersecurity there. Um, there's something that you, first of all, thank you for a very interesting presentation. Um, there's one point that you touched upon very briefly that I was hoping you could expand on, um, namely the gap between offensive cyber and defensive cyber, because um, the issue that, that we're seeing is, um, you know, going back a couple years, there was a very small group of people that have very sophisticated cyber attack capability, but now with the Vault 7, Shadow Brokers, uh, we saw with WannaCry, you know, um, we don't know who did it, but uh, at the end of the day, you know, using extremely sophisticated tools that are now widely available to a much wider range of people. So could you speak a little bit to that gap and, and uh, perhaps offer a, um, you know, some sort of way forward of how we can deal with that? Thank you. I think that uh, you, you uh, uh, raised a um, dimension that I didn't uh, uh, devoted enough which is the civil market of cyber. There is a big uh, industry of companies. In Israel, we can say that uh, most of these companies are based on people who uh, brought their military experience to the civil uh, arena, and uh, they make business. Uh, they make sometimes uh, very good business. So uh, I... It's good that uh, you, uh, you raised it. Uh, you have to take in consideration, and it's open. It's open because it's also com competition between, between companies. So uh, uh, the uh, types uh, of uh, threat that uh, you raise are, are well known, and uh, maybe company A has a certain answer, and company B has a uh, cheaper answer, and so on. It's all, as I said, it's business. Business needs money. Business needs competition, and uh, it is open. In Israel, and I'm sure that also in other countries, also the business market of uh, cyber companies are subject to regulation of the country. That means that when I said so proudly that uh, these co these uh, companies are based on a personnel that uh, studied in the military, we cannot afford that the experience uh, of the military service will be exported uh, uh, without uh, control. So we have, in the Ministry of Defense, we have an, an authority that has to give the permission of exporting uh, different uh, systems, but still, after I say permission, 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 but still it is a, an open market. And uh, you can, in Israel we have, I, I will uh, uh, leave uh, some copies of, uh, a, I'm a, a vice editor of a um, magazine which is called uh, Israel Defense. And uh, in, in Israel, you can, you can uh, Google it, Israel Defense. Uh, and uh, this company make every year also a cyber annual conference with hundreds of people from the world that uh, see also uh, uh, our uh, commercial abilities. So uh, this is uh, an open market controlled. Slide, you talked about the terrorist group. I was wondering if you could talk some more about how Israel understands cyber terrorists, specifically how you incorporate cybersecurity into the terrorist. Thank you. I must say that uh, I don't. I don't have a very uh, good procedure how we can gain uh, deterrence of cyber. 
the first is the very, if you want, the very basic and the trivial measure, punishment. If, if, we, uh, if we meet, and we meet from time to time, we have now in Israel a, a case, a very, very seldom case, but it is a case of a person 17 years old that attacked American systems, American systems, and we got through the FBI. We didn't know. He, he lives in one of the cities in South uh, Israel. From his modest home, he made enormous damage to American uh, companies. He is now under detention. Uh, he, he, uh, he is detained based on, as I said, the, the, the FBI. But punishment, you know, punishment is a trivial deterrence of every criminal. Every criminal knows that maybe he would be found and uh, would be jailed. Uh, to say that this is the ultimate deterrence, I wonder, because we still see uh, how, how extensive, uh, how intensive uh, are the, the... We have in Israel, I, I didn't mention the number, we have in Israel every day 50, 50, thousand attacks, 50,000 attacks every day in Israel, which are defended, which are defended, which means that we, after all, we, when we see it in the uh, bank or uh, when we see it in a hospital, when we see it in uh, the uh, electricity company, we, we have the measures to defend. Sometimes it, it breaks for minutes, sometimes it breaks for hours. It was also a break of hours until we recover, uh, but I, I give you the number because maybe we are more attractive than others because Iran has better interest in Israel than in uh, Norway. You are lucky. Not to mention state, the state uh, deterrence. Well, so we are over time. There are two people who are on the, on the list. The question will be on your schedule if you have five more minutes. Uh, okay, five more minutes. Okay, so we collect them. Uh, there was one there, sir. Is there, sir? One over there. Hello, thank you for a very interesting talk. My name is Odin John Fang. I'm a professor in cybersecurity at the university here in Oslo. Uh, and I'd just like to mention that together with NUPI, who hosts this event, uh, we're organizing next year's European uh, Conference on Cyber Warfare and Security at the end of June. Now, I'd like to ask you uh, uh, your opinion about the role of cybersecurity education for defense, because uh, for building architecture, for example, it's obvious that a building architect must know fire safety. However, you can perfectly well study computer science at many universities around the world without learning anything about security. All these IT experts will go out and build vulnerable systems. This is a problem. What's your opinion on that? Okay. Um, thank you for sorry. Thank you for your presentation. My name is uh, Sir Stan. I'm a student in intelligence and cybersecurity at King's College in London. Um, you talked about the new uh, or the legislation you have, which is um, sharing responsibility between military and, and actors Other. from civil society. Yeah. Yeah. I wonder to which extent private uh, companies are involved in responding to cyber attacks against themselves, according to this law. First of all, the law is uh, still under a uh, process of, uh, it's not done yet. It started two years ago, and I said, even to frame the law is a process. It's a process with different interests, uh, with interest of uh, lobbyists, of uh, people that say ex exactly what uh, you raised. Uh, you give us uh, the responsibility, us, I mean a, a private uh, firm, uh, you give us the responsibility, we want to be funded, we want to be uh, financially uh, covered. And, and so also, uh, it, the, the legislation is not yet done. It is under, under process. 
uh, what is uh, what is done is the feeling that you you have to uh, to share the feeling it's not only the interest of the nation the interest of the government the company the bank for instance th that is the the, the best uh, uh, example from my point of view the bank that suffer from cyber attack they understand more than others how bad it is because people who will know that uh, their account uh, which was uh, 300,000 is now 3,000, uh, 3, uh, the client will escape. So I, I give you a very uh, 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 stupid, stupid example, but the stupid example show that uh, the understanding of what does cyber mean, you don't, hear, you don't need the leader to tell you. If the, your professional staff in the company knows what does it mean to defend the information. It starts from defend the, defending the information. You, you can see, I'm sure that you, you have also, uh, when you get a, 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 the access uh, of your uh, bank account in your computer, you have to put some uh, de defense measures. This is cyber security. You, you, do, you don't call it cyber security, but this is cyber security. It means that they want to ensure that the information which is relevant only to you will be only in your hands. I don't say that it's uh, uh, totally protected, but uh, the interest is, uh, is not divided. Uh, all, all are interested. After all, it's a measure, it's, it's a term of uh, priorities of, of every firm and, prior, and also a question of uh, finance, uh, uh, financial aspects uh, because defending the system is expensive. Uh, the law, as I said, is still uh, under process because there are a lot of uh, different uh, uh, different interests, and uh, I hope that in a year we will conclude it. I don't, I don't know, maybe you know, I don't know about any other country that has such a law. We, uh, we are in, in close contact with, with many. We, uh, uh, we, we didn't see, have you seen uh, such a law in other countries about the uh, uh, responsibility of cyber? Okay. Yes, we have strategy. Also, the second question about uh, education and why don't ah, you learn yeah, security yeah. in your in our uh, universities? <coughs> I think thi this is uh, the question of academy, <coughs> academy vis-a-vis -vis cyber, uh, is uh, a good uh, a good uh, link of thinking how academies uh, produce new uh, horizons for them. I am sure that here, and of course in Israel, cyber is an attractive uh, branch for students. And uh, in order to build uh, a certain uh, academic ability, it means that you need not only the student, you need a staff. Uh, there are very few, I must say, in Israel at least, there are very few professionals that are ready to devote themselves to academy. They prefer, because the better income, if you are a professional, the better income is not being a professor in the university for cyber, but to be a, a CEO in a, a certain uh, company. So we don't have, uh, we don't have a uh, magic touch how to, to do it. We have more people, we have more people if I, uh, compare it to, uh, to a decade ago, we have more people that are now in the academy in cyber, not only security, but in cyber generally, because cyber is also a dimension in the national uh, security programs that we have in universities. We have a, a, <coughs> a <coughs> sorry, a general who was the head of R&D in Israel, uh, after retiring from uh, the military,
military. He started a uh, project of cyber uh, program in one of the universities, and he brought some others, but still we are in a lack of academic staff uh, in the academy. With those words, Dr. General Latif, thank you so much for such a comprehensive talk and, and for sharing your, your insights and, and experience and your Israeli experience with us. Uh, I hope we will not be in a situation ever that, we, that requires so much security attention as, as, as you do, but, but the lessons learned that you have are certainly valuable. So I thank you all for, for, for showing up and for sitting 10 minutes over time. It is really interesting. So let's all give a big hand to our speaker today. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.